Welcome back to Athletic Everyday, day number 162. Coming at you with a sleep-deprived uh, plyometrics and jump workout uh, with a little bit of, um, I think, RDLs at the end. Haven't done RDLs in a while. Uh, sleep-deprived because I uh, decided that I was going to walk to work in the morning this morning. I usually get a lift in, um, but lift wasn't available in the morning, so I decided that I would wake up at half past four to get there for sort of like quarter to six. Um yeah, it was nice to get up in the morning and get going early, but like, you know, I had to lose probably two hours of sleep to do that. So that wasn't ideal, not ideal for this workout. Wasn't feeling very rested and explosive. And what I found is uh, throughout the day, even though I finished work at quarter past two, I just put this work off until like, this workout off until like 9 p.m. I didn't start this until 9 p.m. Luckily, we still have light until, you know, uh, sort of gone 10 in the evening uh, down at this, up at this latitude. Uh, in the UK, but, um, you know, it's not nice to do workouts this late. Uh, I felt like I just kept on putting it off throughout the day. I mentioned pr- mentioned previously another day that um, if I don't do the workout instantly when I get home or I don't, like, set a specific time when I'm going to do it when I get home from work, I'm always going to put it off until last thing. And <laughs> I warned myself about it happening, and then it happened today. But um, as the workout went on and I progressed through the workout, I did actually find that I started to feel a bit more explosive. These sprints felt pretty good. Um, I didn't measure the distance, but this is probably 25 meter sprints, maybe slightly less, slightly more, about 25. It's definitely more than 20. Um, when I set up the cones, I always measure out like yards, but I did sort of longer, longer steps this time. I like to mix up the sprints a little bit, did some curve sprinting here, sort of coming from a 90 degree angle and sprinting. Uh, and then, yeah, it was just a nice little sunset as well this evening. So pretty pleased that I got the workout in at this time so I could watch the sunset. So that was nice. Uh, dunks were not feeling that explosive today either um, but what's good about this is that even though I wasn't feeling particularly bouncy I was still able to get pretty consistent dunks on 9 to 6 they definitely weren't as consistent as usual I was missing quite a lot um, missed <clears throat> missed quite a lot on the right left with the left hand plant that's definitely my weakest at the moment um, but you know still got them in I also got in a few uh, not off the dribble at all and they felt pretty good uh, you know good flushes then, as I mentioned earlier, did some RDLs. RDLs are pretty nice. Um, worked up to probably the heaviest I've ever done for RDLs, actually. I've never really loaded RDLs heavily. I managed to get 110 kilos for a set of, I think it was 10 or 8 or something. Um, <clears throat> and I can really feel it in my hamstrings today, actually. Um, d- d- depending on the hamstring exercise, I tend to find it that different areas of my hamstrings under, are under tension. So when I do RDLs especially, I really feel it on the outer side of that of the hamstring. So I'm not sure exactly which uh, which part of the hamstring that is, semimembranosus, semitendinosus, or the biceps femoris. I've got a funny feeling that it might actually be the biceps femoris um, that's on the outer edge, but I really feel it on the outer edge, and you can see them under tension as I sort of get into that bottom position. Um, and yeah, I felt a little bit of stiffness there today. So obviously that's an indicator that it's a new stimulus that I haven't had in a while. So, um, it's good to mix it up. I think I actually was programmed to do Nordics here, but um, I'm probably going to do Nordics on Sunday after my jump session, uh, with my cleans as well. <clears throat> but yeah, here's that top set of 110 kilos. Bar was moving pretty well. I had to use straps though. I mean, I could have hook gripped it and I did hook grip it on the hundred kilos that you watched previously on that previous set. Um, but I felt like the bar was slipping. I didn't want grip strength to be a limiting factor for this movement here. So um, yeah, it's not it's not a bad thing if you use uh, straps to help you with the grip. You're trying to f- focus and target on the lower body. So yeah, don't let your grip strength limit you with how much weight you can do. Probably could conservatively have done 120 and above there. Um, but you know, didn't have the time. By this point in the workout, it was probably gone 10 o'clock and I just wanted to go to bed because uh, I had work today as well. Uh, so yeah, this was quite convenient though, because then I could use the same setup to do my bent leg calf raises, which were programmed 110 kilos for, I think, two sets of 10. Um, really nice. Uh, I always love the pump that these give my soleus. And right after the workout, I always feel like, even if I'm fi- experiencing like a slight little bit of knee problems, whenever I do soleus calf raises, they always seem to sort the knee problems right out. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why, but maybe it's just anecdotal experience, but... Uh, give it a shot if you want to try it. Uh, Celeste so calf raises, bent left calf raises are fantastic. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.